Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for February, where we cover recent big and small updates from Firebase. And we have seven topics today, so let's dig in right away. If you're using Firebase to distribute pre-release builds of your Android apps to your testers, you can now also get automatic smoke tests for those builds. You can enable these automatic tests after you upload the build to app distribution by adding the automated tester. You can select what devices to run on, or you can leave it to Firebase to decide. You can then trigger these automatic tests from the Firebase console, as we just saw, but also from the Firebase CLI, from your app's Gradle build file, and through Fastlane. Once the auto test is completed, you can see the results right in the App Distro console, as we can see here. The automated tests are powered by Firebase Test Lab and its robot tester, so it has the same pricing and uses the same no cost tier as your existing automated tests. Flutter is moving towards using Wasm for its web apps, which should lead to a significant performance improvement. And they just released Flutter version 3.19 and Dart version 3.3, which contains important building blocks for this Wasm support, such as extension types. The Flutter SDKs for Firebase are also being upgraded to use JS Interop, so that you can use them in Flutter apps that target Wasm in the future. And while nothing should change during this migration, we did see some regression bugs sneaking into recent updates. So if you suddenly see something fail in your Flutter web apps after you upgrade the Firebase SDK, be sure to file a bug on the repo that I'll link below. If you're building apps for iOS or other platforms with Flutter and you use Firestore, you probably know about this neat optimization that shaves minutes of your compile times by using pre-compiled binaries. Well, it turns out that we broke this process back in November when we switched to using Swift as our primary language for Apple platforms. And it took us until a few weeks ago to get this fixed. Sorry. The good news is that all is back to normal now, so be sure to follow the optional steps in the doc again to speed up your build times. The integration of Cloud Functions Gen 2 and Firestore is made possible by the Event Arc triggering system. And this integration has now graduated to general availability, which means that it's ready for your production workloads. Remember, Event Arc is our infrastructure to trigger server-side code from events in Google Cloud projects, and it now directly integrates with 31 services with another 162 services through cloud logging, and it supports over 3,000 event types. You can also route event arc events to Cloud Run directly, to Cloud Workflows, or to a persistent GKE instance. So there's an almost infinite number of options for your serverless event-driven app architecture. And we're finishing this episode with some updates to Crashlytics. First, the Crashlytics panel in the Firebase console now shows a chart within each row of the issue list to help you understand how that issue is trending over time. We've also improved Crashlytics to provide more and better crash-free metrics. We allow you to zoom in on the crash-free user data for the past 24 hours so that you can see additional details. And we added information about crash-free sessions, as you can see here. Sessions without crashes indicate overall reliability of an app and they build user confidence. Also, Crashlytics can now send velocity alerts and report crash-free user and session data without you having to use the Firebase SDK for Google Analytics. At Demo Day in November, we first mentioned that we're working on this new release monitoring feature in Crashlytics. Well, that feature is now rolling out to the first users. So if you suddenly see another update in the Crashlytics console that looks like this, you know where it's coming from. We will, of course, cover this release in more depth once it's rolled out to every user. Those were all the updates we have for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank, or Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.